In the tutorial covering animation notifies, I showed how you could use your anim notify to spawn a particle effect, which is a built-in system in Unreal Engine. But it occurred to me, what if you have a situation where the special effect that you want to spawn in is a flipbook itself? How do you do that? We can also do that with animation notifies. And the way you do it is first you set up your animation flipbook. In this case, we have an explosion. And then you create a blueprint character for that explosion, a very simplistic one. So the type of blueprint that you're setting up is just a paper character, not a paper ZD character, just a basic paper character. And I've created one of those here. And in case you don't remember how, you just go to blueprint class, type in paper, and we have a paper character right here. Now within that blueprint, you need to do a, a few things. So under your components for your sprite, you assign the flipbook right here for the effect that you're adding in, in this case, the explosion. And then for the capsule component, we go all the way down here and we turn off collisions unless your particular special effect actually does collide with things and have effects on things. But generally, it's just a visual effect that you want. So you don't want any collisions. You don't want it to mess with anything. And then in the event graph, you simply tell it, find out how many frames are in my flipbook, wait that many frames, and then destroy the actor. So it'll appear, it will animate, and then it'll disappear. And that's all you need to do to set up the, the actor that is your special effect that you're going to be spawning in. And then for your animation notify, and I will include a link to this blueprint in the blueprint paste bin down in the description. But just like with the other notifies, you have the not valid and valid branches both filled in. So the not valid one is the one that will appear in the preview window in your timeline in your animation source so that you can see a preview of what it's going to look like and you can adjust it. And that's what these variables are for, is allow you to make those adjustments live in your timeline, which makes tuning things and dialing them in so much easier. And then the valid line is actually spawning it in the world. The important thing with the, the spawn actor is make sure always spawn, ignore collisions. Again, it's just a special effect. You don't want it to be bumping into things and, and getting stuck on things and colliding with things and stuff like that. Now you notice it uses two different transforms. And that's because the way the engine treats things when you're looking at it in a preview window as opposed to looking at it in the world are different. And so you have to use these different transforms to get the accurate locations. If everything else is set up exactly the same, what you do in this preview window using this transform will translate to precisely the same thing in relation to the animation you're spawning the effect on. So like, for example, in this case, the death animation for my character is going to have an explosion spawn on the character. So where the character is located in the world and where the character is located in the preview window, they, they match up. And so when you spawn the actor, what you see in the preview window will be exactly what you see in the game, making it really easy to dial things in. So you're just adjusting it by the offset, which is what you're going to be entering values into in your preview selecting what effect. So this blueprint can be used to spawn in all kinds of different effects. This isn't specific to a particular character, a particular animation, a particular effect, anything like that. And then down here, this one I tried to have it just automatically detect how long it should wait before destroying the actor to clean it off the screen. And I couldn't get it to work. So basically you just manually put in a duration that you want the animation to appear in the preview window on your timeline. If the animation is too short, if the value you put in is too low, then you don't see the entire animation, which you may want. Maybe you only want to see the first frame of the animation to see exactly where that frame is going to appear. You know, it's up to you. This value can be adjusted. If the value is too long, then the animations stack up on each other when you're looping your timeline. 
and eventually that breaks Unreal Engine. You just have so many of them stacked on top of each other that they become an infinite loop and they never ever go away. And then you have to close your animation source and open it back up again in order to get rid of that. So you dial that number in. It's just a trial and error thing. I found the number 15 generally works for me. And it's the default that I have set for this. But just dial the number as you see fit. So now if we go over to our animation source, all we do is we add a notify track in, which you do right here, add notify track. And then you right click, add notify. In this case, this is our animation notify spawn effect. And then select the notify. And over here you select the effect, which is the blueprint that we created, specifically in this case, the explosion. The effect duration, you can play around with that and then your offsets, your X, Y, and your Z, right? So by default, these are all gonna be zero. If I run this, so we'll jump back to the beginning and run it. Now you see the explosion happens, so I'll put this on a loop. And to turn off the annoyance, we will have it not preview the sound, thank you. Okay, so you can see the explosion is happening sort of in front of the character, which is maybe that's what you want. You know, a rocket comes flying in and the explosion happens right in front of their face. But just to show that you can dial this in, let's change this to say 10. Now the explosion happens further ahead of them. Maybe with this one, you want to happen, the explosion to happen a little bit higher. You can dial it in until you have it appear just the way you want it. And then when you actually go and run your game, ah! the explosion happens in exactly the same place in relation to your character that is happening in your preview timeline. So you can then add this anim notify to any of your other animations. Also, like if you want to have the explosion happen a little further along in the animation, so we'll slide this over here. So now the explosion doesn't happen at the very beginning. It happens a little further in. So you can dial in exactly when the animation happens. You can dial in exactly where it's going to appear and everything like that. And that's exactly what you're going to get in the game. Also, another note is if you're working with a team and you aren't the animator, so you're just working with placeholder animations and someone else is going to come along later and they're going to add in the actual animations for the game, doing it this way makes their job so much easier. They can come in, they can adjust the sound effects, they can adjust what effects are being spawned in, when the effect, when the sound effects happen, again, they can just slide this around. When the special effects happen, where exactly they appear in relation to the character, and customize things and dial them in to be just right. They don't have to go in and do anything with your character blueprint. They can just stick to the animation source. They can see a preview of exactly how it's gonna appear in game. Uh, this also allows in, in a project where you don't want people who don't know anything about blueprinting, you don't want them to have access to this file, right? The members of the team that do strictly artwork, you don't want them messing around with this. So you can restrict them to you know just having access to the animation source. And they can come in here and they can work on the animation source and get all the animations just right and never have to even see this, never have to have access to it. You could have it on a network where this file is restricted to only members of the blueprinting team or whatnot. So this is also very helpful for that. So again, it's a very simple blueprint. And I will be providing a link down in the description where you can get a copy of it yourself so that you don't have to create all this yourself. And for the animation itself, you just add in the flipbook, turn off collisions, and have it destroy itself after it's run through however many frames it has. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Hope you guys found this helpful. Have a good one.